What's going on, hikers? In today's video, we are checking out some gear. I have a gear overhaul here, actually. Some stuff that I never take or may have never seen a lot of day in the backcountry, but we're gonna give it a go. And I wanna share with you all the pieces of gear in this ultralight gear loadout. Ultralight for me, anyway. But I'll share with you the weights. I'll share with you what I'm gonna take. Also, I'm not going super in depth on every piece of gear. So I'm gonna link in the description if you wanna go more in depth on the gear. Check out the links. Um, if you wanna purchase it, they are affiliate links. So I'm gonna get a small commission, but there's no extra charge to you. I'm also gonna link something I've never done before. I use lighterpack.com and it pretty much lets me split all my gear up into categories and I can put in descriptions for the gear, the weight of the gear, that kind of thing to see where I can shed some pounds. So I'll link that for you too so you can kind of see it split up into the different sections. So before we start with the backpack, um, I do want to mention, if you're new to the channel, my name is Jeremiah Stringer and here we talk about all things hiking and backpacking. So if you're into that kind of thing, consider subscribing to the channel. Now let's check out what I'm actually gonna wear whenever I'm in the backcountry because I really don't count that as part of my weight. First thing, let's start with the feet. These are Hoka Speedgoat 4s. Next, let's go with what kind of socks am I gonna wear? Well, on this trip, I am wearing darn tough crew cut socks. And how about underwear? These are just a cheap pair of um, underwear I bought at Walmart. Just, they're synthetic, so they won't lose all their insulation value when they get wet. Don't wear cotton underwear in the back country. You could, you could wear a cotton shirt around camp and stuff, but I definitely wouldn't go with the cotton underwear. Pants. Now, I absolutely fell in love with these pants on my last trip. It was my first trip wearing them. These are Under Armour pants, and they're cargo pants. They're a good fit for me, and they were the right length because when you're tall, one thing you run into is <laughs> you buy these pants. I remember one of my friends was walking behind me, and they are like, you ever think about uh, spending a little extra money and buying pants that are long enough? And I look down like my ankle's hanging out. So <laughs> comment down there if you run into the same problem. Paul, tall people problems. My shirt is a Columbia PFG fishing shirt and it is long sleeve. I am a big fan even in the summer. I'm taking a buff. My wife bought me this buff for Christmas. Thank you, babe. Uh, a Primo's hat. I like the mesh hat. Don't sweat as much, I think. Maybe I'm just making that up. And these are just weightlifting gloves. I like to wear those because I'm a sissy and I don't like um, my hands rubbing on my trekking poles. But speaking of trekking poles, that's the first thing I'm gonna take off of this pack. Customer Gear actually sent me these. They are carbon fiber trekking poles. They're pretty expensive. Uh, I'm usually not a big fan of the whole twist lock. I like the snap, but I was impressed that these things weigh 10 ounces, which was about the same weight as a normal aluminum trekking pole like by like Black Diamond. So that was super awesome. These really are ultra light. So I normally am like, okay, I'm carrying these in my hands, right? So the weight doesn't matter a whole lot. But if you are truly wanting to go ultra light, I would definitely suggest checking them out. Let's go all around the outside of this backpack. Uh, first, I'll tell you what this backpack is. I don't think it actually has a name because one of my friends made it for me. It's a custom backpack and it has a mesh front, pockets on the sides, and then it has these massive hip belt pockets, which hopefully you can see there. And let's unpack the outside and see what we got. So starting on one of the water, bo uh, one of the water bottle pockets, I have a 700 milliliter bottle. On the other side, I have a one liter life water bottle. Also, since the pockets are so massive, I am going to store my um, TP and all that kind of stuff in one of those pockets. And something I've never used in the backcountry, but I have been practicing at home. One of my subscribers, shout out to Tom. Tom sent me this pocket bidet. Now he said he didn't use it. <laughs> He said it was brand new. So I'm gonna take that at face value, but I'm sure that I'll get to try it out because three days in the woods, who's not gonna poop during those days? I also have some wet ones in there. I have a deuce of spades, which weighs 0.6 ounces. I have just some TP and some anti-monkey butt because I don't wanna get chafed 
especially on a multi-day trip. If it was just one night, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I have found though that if I'll take a wet wipe and I will clean my feet and then my nether regions before I crawl into my sleeping bag at night, it really, really does help me from getting chafed. On the front or the back of the pack, depending on how you look at it, we have this mesh pocket. And inside the mesh pocket, I have Tyvek, which I am tarp camping on this trip. So this is gonna be my shelter floor. Tarp camping, completely new to me. I have a Thunderfly 11 foot war bonnet. It's by War Bonnet. That's who makes it. They actually sent it to me for testing for the Backpacking Podcast, which I am a co host on, myself and John Kelly. Check it out. Shameless plugs for days here. Um, but on the Backpacking Podcast, we got in touch with War Bonnet and we're working with them. And I'm going to use that 11 foot Thunderfly as my primary shelter. I also like to keep my rain jacket on the outside of my pack. Now this is the uh, Frog Togs $30 or maybe they're $35 now. It's the Extreme Light. It's not actually extremely light. You can buy a lot of rain jackets, but for $30, bucks, it has been working for me for a couple years now. For cordage, I bring a little bit of extra cordage just in case. You never know what you'll need it for. This is just 550 cord. And then you're going to see I have a number of things from Hilltop Packs today. This, Hilltop Packs, uh, if you want to check out their site, hilltoppacks.com, he can print anything on Dyneema. So he made this little stuff sack. It's a, his bear hanging kit. And it has my logo on it, a carabiner, and I think 50 feet of zingit, it's called. So cordage so I can not get eaten by bears at night. We'll see how that turns out. I have four MSR mini groundhog stakes to stake down my shelter. I really probably should set that shelter up before going into the backcountry to make sure I don't need more stakes, but I think four is gonna do the job. Now, something super cool about this backpack is it has these upper pockets above my water bottle pouch, and I absolutely love that. On one side, I have my water filter little stuff sack. And in there, I'll share a couple hacks along the way while we're doing this video. Unfortunately, I have the Sawyer Squeeze, just stock, dirty water bag. My platypus uh, busted on my last trip video. If you want to check that out and some other gear failures, absolutely check out those uh, that video that I just released for the Red River Gorge. Got some noon tablets to keep me from getting dehydrated. I have a Sawyer Squeeze, and a little hack that I wanted to share with you was you can cut off the straw part that comes with the gravity part of this whole Sawyer squeeze and you can attach it to this coupling because when I filter water I found that if I'm using the cap they sent me to go on, so on top of the Sawyer squeeze it slips out so I like something that will insert into the bottle and will really hold and not get my shoes wet because I like to filter by holding the bottle between my feet oh I dropped the lid but it's just a smart water lid it's winter time I have to take an extra Ziploc bag so I can keep my Sawyer squeeze from freezing at night and I just leave it inside my sleeping bag, sleep with it. And then the only other thing in there is just some flavor packets. So that's it for the filter. I have hot hands, two packs of hot hands. Now beware, you can see behind me, I have burnt my underquilt because I threw some hot hands in my backpack and they were super compressed and melted the underquilt. But Never fear, I repaired the underquilt with some of this. This is my miscellaneous little Ziploc bag. It's got tenacious tape in there. So if you do like rip your puffy or burn a hole in it or something around the campfire, take some tenacious tape with you and repair it. This thing will hold for a long time. I even had to repair the sleeping bag you're gonna see with tenacious tape because it got burnt. That's a story for another day. <laughs> I have an extra O-ring for the Sawyer Squeeze, um, and I have a fire start cube in there that I can uh, I can use to start me a good fire. I have, in the other side, I have a hygiene bag in there. I won't go over everything in there. Like I said, you can, te you can check out the link for the lighter pack and see exactly what's in my hygiene bag because it's a category, but it's the standard toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, tape for blisters, that kind of thing. Um, the last things on the outside of my pack are actually 
on the side with the shoulder straps, it's got these nice thick shoulder straps. And I like to keep a pack towel, well this one literally is by pack towel, on the outside. This thing is very, very light, a lot lighter than the last one I was using. Also, I stole my wife's hand sanitizer. This is called Winter Citrus Wreath. And mm, smells just like Christmas. Bath and Body Works, baby. I also have another thing by Hilltop Packs is the cell phone holder. And you can see I have a tripod stuck in there. Cell phone holder, it's got a little mesh part. And sometimes I'll keep a map in there or something like that. But I have an UltraPod 2 since I'm going to be filming this trip. I figured I'd bring a tripod. And then it, the cell phone holder is made out of Dyneema. So we are expecting rain. This will keep my phone dry while I'm walking because it's got a roll down top. The last thing on the outside of this pack is it has these massive hip belt pockets. And I'm using the left one to keep the camera in that I'm filming this video. It's a Canon M50 with a 22 millimeter pancake lens. So it actually does feel, uh, fit in there. So my number one gripe with backpacks is those small hip belt pockets. In the other hip belt pocket, I have my headlamp for quick, easy access. I have my AirPods. And I have a big lighter, full size on this one. Let's see what's inside of this bad boy. So inside the backpack, I'm looking top down view here. First thing you'll see is I have this food bag that is also by Hilltop Packs. <laughs> they didn't sponsor this video. I just have a lot of Ben's gear. Um, he printed me this food bag. It's got my Instagram feed on there. And I also have another Hilltop Packs <laughs> bag. This is, especially if you, you take batteries out with you, like I take them for my camera. I have um, this 10,000 milliamp hour Aki quick charge power bank. And then the cool thing about this bag is one side's red, one side's green, and it's got a divider in there so you can divide up your charge batteries versus the ones that are already dead. Some advice I would give you, just buy an iPhone cord or whatever phone cord you need and leave it in your backpacking stuff because I have found that a lot of people will have either the cord or the power bank, but not both. So I just have a cord that I leave in there. I also have another cord that I can charge my headlamp with. And the rest are just like SD cards and batteries, which you probably don't care about because you probably don't film your adventures. And if you do, kudos. That's awesome. Keep it up. This is my GSI Soloist cook kit. Everything I need to cook is in this little container here. My favorite part is the lid, and I'll tell you why here in just a second. But inside the cook pot, which the cook pot weighs, yep, that's how much it weighs. There is a BRS stove. Now I'm taking this one instead of my Pocket Rocket Deluxe because this is my ultralight trip. And that BRS, it doesn't get a whole lot lighter than a BRS, maybe an alcohol stove, but I don't want to take that in the winter. I'm taking a mini Bic to light my BRS. You're like, yeah, you already have a lighter. I know, but I like two lighters just in case. Like the bushcraft people say, um, two is one, one is none. In this case, I'm sticking with it. I have a cleaning cloth. It is microfiber, which I'm not a super, few, uh, super huge fan of. I have an isobutane propane mix, 100 gram can, which actually weighs 200 grams because the can's 100 and the fuel's 100. But this is a four season can. I bought it at Dunham's, which is a local sporting goods store. So if you're looking for four season, which means it's gonna work better for the winter time because it's a mix of fuel, not just propane. I would definitely take something like that. So this little cup, it has measurements on the inside, as does the cook pot. And I love that it has this little sleeve on it. The sleeve keeps it from burning my hand if I put hot water in there, because in the morning, what I often do is take the lid, I'll turn it upside down, and I'll snap it on to my cup, and then that's my coffee mug. So when I'm walking out to the car or you know just hiking on to my next destination, warm cup of coffee, awesome. Absolutely love it. Okay, let's set that aside and keep this show on the road, baby. Hear all that rattling? 
that's my compactor bag that I keep inside my backpack to keep everything dry. Because day two, rain, 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 go away. I gotta keep everything dry. Now to give my backpack, this is a frameless pack. To give it a little structure, I do have a Z seat. I tuck it into uh, the part that's gonna touch my back because without a frame, this backpack just kind of wilts into itself until I have stuff in it. So there's that. Ooh, Patagucci. This is one of my two Patagonia articles of clothing because it's so expensive I can't afford it. So Patagonia quarter zip fleece, super warm. Love that thing. And uh, if you're like me, <laughs> save up and get you one piece of Patagonia clothing a year. <laughs> this is the piece that I bought last year. It's a fleece lined wool beanie. Love that. Pretty much take that on every trip um, if I'm expecting any cold weather at all. I have a Trekology pillow. Normally I take two pillows, one to put between my legs and one to put under my head, but I'm only taking one because like I said, this is my ultralight trip. I have, ooh, the Nemo Tensor Alpine, which I took it on my most recent trip to the Red River Gorge and tried it out. It's the Alpine. Now, I have the X-Lite as well. That's a very, very popular bat, or sleeping pad, but the Nemo Tensor Alpine was very, very warm. You know, it's got a higher R value than my X-Lite. These are half finger gloves, which I know you're like, what is the deal with this guy and his half finger gloves, right? I don't know, I just like them, even in the winter time. These are by Sims, they're wool gloves. I have some wool socks as well. These are just for camp though. I never wear them for actual backpacking, it's just whenever I get to camp and I clean my feet and I put those on. I have a merino wool base layer that I put on at camp. Uh, sometimes I'll take a cotton t-shirt, but I don't know. I'm going to take this. I took it last time and it was super warm and comfy. So it's the 150 Smart Wool shirt. I have Under Armour 3.0 leggings. These things are fairly expensive as well, but I would say out of all my winter gear, a good warm pair of leggings would be number one besides like a good puffy. But leggings are so key. Unless you're just going to the gym and you're wearing leggings and no shorts and you're a guy. Now that, I have, I have always thought that's a little bit odd. I'm taking an extra pair of darn tough socks for, you know, you, I like to switch out socks each day, but I guess I'll wear the same pair twice at some point because it's a three day trip and I only got two pairs of socks. I have a Ghost Whisperer, which I weighed, and I thought this thing was eight ounces. What the heck, Mountain Hardware? This thing weighs 8.8 weighs .8 ounces, but that's okay. It's a lot lighter than my other Puffy, which is a North Face. Now my sleeping bag. I am in the market for a quilt. I'm probably gonna get a zero degree quilt from UGQ, but right now I'm using this 15 degree Nemo Disco which it always keeps me warm, you know? I took it on the long trail with me and it did great. This thing, super cool on the inside, it's neon yellow or green, so it's easier to find your stuff on the inside. I have found that the darker the inside of your sleeping bag is, it's like a dark hole. Whenever, whenever something falls into it, or a black hole rather, it's just gone till you look for it in the morning where you got plenty of light. And I guess that's it. Make sure you check out the upcoming video so you can see how the trip went. If you enjoyed this one, give me one of these, comment, tell me what's your favorite piece of gear below, and uh, subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell. It really helps. Love you guys. We'll see you in the next one.